The hot air blew up north from the Gulf, and the cold winds swept in south from Canada. And when two fronts collided over the states, their battle spilled over into the monstrosities, rolling storm cloud not a few miles north of my lot in the woods. For the better part of an hour as things there unfolded, the buzz of the weather alert was all I could hear on the TV and on the radio. They're saying this could be a big one folks. Stay indoors and be prepared to run to the cellar if the supercell does indeed produce a funnel cloud. We'll keep you updated as more information becomes available. And all at once I could see the black underside of the beast as it moved. And then the trees started to list and sway, and then the wind rolled up through the grass until it blew dust onto my trousers and into my hair. I whistled. Come on Shiloh! Inside boy, let's go! The dog bounded up the stairs and I shut the door behind the two of us. And then it began to rain. Nothing but a drizzle at first, but then a pounding, howling downpour that fell in sheets and torrents. It turned the dirt to mud, and it poured from the gutters and it swept up against the windows like ocean surf. Shiloh never won those thunderstorms if he could help it, lay down on the rug and covered his snout with a paw and began to whine. Hang in there boy, it'll be over soon. I sat down on the recliner and turned the TV and pet him, abstinently with my free hand. Of uh, the storm. Well, do you think it'll produce a twister? It's... it's hard to say right now, Debbie. The conditions we think are there, especially here, near Fairfield and over here in the, uh, in the Manchester area. You can see on the radar how that's playing out, so that's certainly a cause of con for concern that we're keeping a close watch on. Thanks Kevin. And I'm getting a word now that there is indeed a tornado watch now, in Fort Hutchins and in Charles Counties. And of course, you can get a more comprehensive list of affected areas on our website and at the bottom of the screen. To anyone in the path of this storm, especially in those areas, it is imperative that you are either prepared to move to a storm shelter on a short notice or find a low place to hide, without windows if at all possible. Place mattresses up against any exposed windows if you can, and do not attempt to drive away from the storm until the watch is expired. I looked at the window. It was hard to see much of anything through the wind and the rain, but it was dark out there for sure. I stood up and walked over to the window to get a better view, but it was so worked over in fog and rainwater that I could hardly see a thing. Stay put Shiloh, I'm just going to take a quick peek out the door. I cracked it open a bit and the sound of the storm utterly exploded into the house. I could barely hear the dog bark over the sound of the wind and rain and the claps of thunder. Then a spear of lightning bolted across the sky. Whoa, it's a big one boy, I shouted. Might have to rev up that generator in a bit. I eased the door open a bit more and leaned out. Within seconds I was nearly as soaked as the porch and then I had to squint and shield my eyes and wipe my hair off my forehead when the rain plastered it there with weight. In the distance and through the trees, I could still see the sunset, but the red and orange and yellow there had hit a hard, fast wall of blackened storm clouds a few miles off. And that cloud only got darker and more violent the closer it got to where I stood. The grass in my fields was nearly flattened with wind too, and the trees were heaving sideways and billowing their tops to the windfall as the storm threw its back to their beating. I craned my neck upward, the clouds were moving fast above the house. I could tell that even through the rain, they swirled and bulged and they chased their tails and wisps of them scouted the ground and dipped deep and low. I felt Shiloh brush up against my leg. Back inside boy, I gently nudged him the heel of my boot. Things are getting worse out here. They shut the door and muffled the sound by doing so, and Shiloh went back to his spot on the rug and picked up his whining where he left it off. I knelt down and scratched behind his ear. Almost over boy. Storms this bad can't last too long. But the storm didn't light up. It carried on through the afternoon and into the evening and only strengthened as it did. I kept tuned into the TV as I made a casserole down near Fairview. And luckily the worst of the storm is holding to the northwest of Wilbur Heights, which of course is minimizing the damage there. Uh yeah, that's right Deb, but the roads there are just clogged to death and back with people getting out of the storm's way. And that kind of, uh, that kind of congestion could prove to be very dangerous if things do indeed decide to move in that direction. Well, we certainly hope everyone there gets themselves to safety before that happens. Shiloh had his nose pressed up against the window as the talking heads conversed. He was almost perfectly still. His tail was tucked, his paws were set wide and he had one of his ears standing on the end. Anything interesting out there, boy? He paid me no heed, so I got up and joined him at the window. The storm had reached a hurricane level of fury. The rain was flying in sideways. 
Now, and bursts of lightning illuminated a number of downed trees at the edge of the yard. The rest of them continued to bend their spines into the wind. It's a wonder the power's still on, ain't it? I scratched the back of his head. He continued ignoring me, but when I got up to check on dinner, he barked. Shh! Hey, no need for that, Shiloh. Come on now. He barked again. Shiloh! He barked a third time and a fourth. Then his ears flattened up against his head and he backed up a little from the window and growled under his breath. You see something, boy? He barked again. I went back over to the window and did my damnness to peer out of it, but all I could see in here was darkness and wind. Come on, no more barking inside, boy. So, where's this all coming from, Kevin? It's been turning non-stop for 12 hours now. Emergency crews can't even get out there to do their jobs properly. It's, uh, it's definitely lasting longer than anyone predicted. I'll give you that. But it's not unheard of for particularly powerful front collisions to result in longer lasting supercell systems like this. We'll just have to see how it plays out. And has the center of the storm moved at all? Bizarrely, it hasn't, Deb. It remained relatively stationary outside Wilbur Heights and Bell South, and it's actually, uh, it's actually gaining strength in certain areas too. And of course, we're now getting some reports of widespread power outages and property damage in the Riverside area. Here's a video of the 7-Eleven at the intersection of Turner and Route 40. This was turned into us by an anonymous source. You can clearly see some severe, uh, severe structural damage to those gas pumps and a lot of debris floating around the parking lot. It's not the best angle, but if you look right here, you can see part of the gas station's roof is kind of, uh, kind of hanging off there. Fortunately, we have yet to hear of any injuries or fatalities, but you know, there's only so much a lot of the older buildings out there can take. Unfortunately, that's right, Deb. A lot of the houses in Riverside and Port Harbor areas were built decades ago, and in some of the lower end neighborhoods out there, um, the architecture is particularly vulnerable to high speed, prolonged winds like what we're seeing here tonight. Any advice for people who might be trapped in those areas for the duration? Well, you covered up the bases pretty well earlier, I think. But it's worth repeating, board up your windows or put up a mattress in case the glass shutters. And at all times, have a place in mind to run if things get particularly bad. Make sure it has no windows. Make sure it's low to the ground. Bathrooms and basements are good choices to run to in a pinch. And as a last resort, find a ditch or some other low ground to lie down in. And I believe that tornado watch has been extended. Is that right, Kevin? It has, yes. And that's why knowing the safety tips is essential right about now. The watch has been extended to midnight in Manchester and Fairfield County areas. And it's even been widened in scope to include courtside hills. Charlotte remained vigilant by the window. And I was staying up in the recliner, watching this news with coffee, but dozing off here and there. The storm continued to rage outside. Every once in a while, I'd open the door to take a peek, but I stopped that once the wind became so violent, I struggled to shut the door against it. There was also the f Charlotte yelped and my heartbeat slammed. Fuck! The dog leapt back into his defensive stance by the window, ears flattened to his head, hair up on end, teeth bared up to the gums. He barked again and then growled. Loudest clap of thunder I think I've ever heard. What about you, boy? I was scratching him behind the ears, but he was focused on something outside. I followed his gaze to the top of the trees, and just as I did, there was a spectacular flash of red lightning that spilled its glow across the forest. Shiloh let out a little squeal of confusion. My mouth hung open a bit. The hell? The lightning flashed again, a deep, almost purplish red thrown out by giant spears of electric power that shot to and fro, and through a small gap in the mist. I saw nearly to the top of the big storm cloud when it did. It was a colossal monstrosity, obscured by the darkness of its own underside, a belowing, rolling titan of a storm cloud lit from within by lightning and that must have stretched for miles in every direction. God only knew how high up into the atmosphere it went. God almighty. I've never seen anything like that in my life. I rubbed Charlie's back. So I don't think this is a normal storm, old buddy. Flashes of red lightning kept out throughout the night, and every once in a while they'd be joined by the lancing snaps of blue and purple. It was a spectacular and breathtaking display, wondrous and otherworldly to behold, but I'd be dishonest if I didn't admit it was the most terrifying experience of my life. 
Meanwhile, the rain kept falling in sheets, and then the wind had remained at steady, low hurricane speeds for some hours now. The front yard was littered with debris and branches and pale stones the size of a fist. The power flickered in and out too. I wasn't sure how it'd stay on as long as it had, but it wouldn't hold much longer. It couldn't. I had the TV on while Shiloh and I watched the storm from the window, and I glanced at it from time to time. The picture flickered and static filled up the screen between shots of the news desk. Reports of red ing a confounding over in Riverview where Deb, this is unlike I've ever seen. This is not an ordinary storm. That cloud above Lanimbus. Cumulonimbus hypercell is new classification. Well it's yes, and I who the feed turned to static, and then, with an audible snap, the power went out for a final time. I whistled inside. Just us in here now, boy. I hugged him tight and felt how violently he was shaking. I think I was shaking too, so for both of our sakes, I kissed his head and said, Glad you're here with me, buddy. That's gotta count for something. And we turned back to the window to watch the storm. Shiloh? Where are you, boy? I listened for him, a whine or a bark, but heard nothing. My heartbeat quickened in pace until it was slamming. Shiloh! I started digging through the rubble of my home, tossing bricks and shards of glass and chunks of drywall to the side. They started forming a pile behind me. Come on boy, don't you do this to me, don't you do this! I dug and dug and dug until my nails had fallen off, until the skin of my fingertips peeled back to the bone, and then I dug some more. He was nowhere to be found. My dog, my best friend in the whole world, crushed under the weight of his own home. I couldn't begin to imagine. Shiloh, please, come here boy, come on, I need you Shiloh, I... I heard a bark behind me, but it wasn't Shiloh's. It was a deep and loud and it echoed and rattled my eardrums. Then I heard it again, louder. I turned around and peered right into the darkness behind me. It was thick and it was black and nigh impenetrable, but it was far from empty. I could feel the wind getting stronger until my hair was flying and my skin began to peel away. I couldn't breathe. Then there was a flash of that red lightning, and for a split second before it hit in that light, I saw a tornado of incomprehensible vastness bearing down on me to destroy what it hadn't destroyed the first time. Shy! Low. I bolted upright and gasped and grabbed at my chest. I was still at home, covered in sweat but alive and awake in the darkness. I could still hear the howl of the storm outside. I breathed a sigh of relief and then Shiloh plodded up and started licking my face. <laughs> hey, hey there, boy. Sorry about that buddy. I scratched behind his ears. Just a bad dream. I looked at my phone, five in the morning. I managed to get nearly a full night's sleep in spite of everything. You hungry boy? I got up and used the flashlight to find the dog food bag and then Shiloh in held his breakfast while I looked out the back window. Can't believe it's lasting this long. It truly was incredible. The rain had abated a bit. I could see, not a lot, but a bit. But the wind still howled and the sky remained nearly pitch black dark. Not a drop or note of sunlight made it through the canopy of cloud cover. But frequent pulses of that red lightning afforded me enough visibly to appreciate the wreckage of my yard. It looked like the Somme. Trees were leafless and down, branches carpeted the grass, and I could see split roof shingles lying soaked in puddles at the foot of the yard. Oh, but the insurance company's about to have hell of a day. Hey boy, I'm gonna run outside and see if I can't turn on the generator. He ate the last bite of food and turned to me. You stay put, okay? He wagged his tail, but when he saw I was moving for the door, he stood up and barked. I'll be back in a minute, boy, okay? I throw on my coat. Generator's just outside. Calm down. He barked again and again, but I just rubbed my eyes and stepped outside. As expected, it looked less than a second to get completely utterly soaked in the downpour. I could feel the moisture through the coat soaking into my t-shirt, and even my boots struggled to keep my feet dry. But I slogged through the mess and the mud, and the debris all the same, and slowly advanced up to the generator. I threw back the tarp and... I turned around, Shiloh had thrown himself up against inside of the window and descended into madness. He was barking and chewing at the glass and frantically, desperately trying to grab my attention. I never seen him in such a fit. 
but from what I could tell, he wasn't seeking help for himself. He was trying to save me. As soon as I realized this, I heard something in the distance that continuated the single loudest and most bizarre sound I'd ever heard. It wasn't thunder. It wasn't an explosion. In fact, it wasn't especially dissimilar from a whale call or the horn of a ship docking at a harbour. It was a deafening, animalistic sonic blast that lasted for several seconds and carried hard and steady over the thunder. I felt my blood beat wash to a stop, and then I turned. I couldn't see much, but I saw enough. There was something in the cloud. A formless mass moving east and still well behind the mist. Then I heard the sound again. And then a flash of red lightning shed its glow on what I could now confirm was a still clouded over form of something moving there. Something alive that was titanic and otherworldly to a degree I can't eloquently put into words. I forgot all about the generator. I dropped the cord, I forgot all about Shiloh too, who was still barking himself into a fit from inside the house. And for the briefest of moments, I even forgot about the storm, although I was still being pelted with rain. I was simply basking there in unspeakable existential awe. Not a normal storm indeed. Not by a long shot. I stood and watched the beast, whatever it was, move slowly but with grace behind the storm. Then I heard a low, rumbling thud. They may have been its footstep. The ground shook when it hit, and then the giant shadow of the figure faded into the upper clouds, and the storm resumed as before with a spectacular clap of thunder that shocked me back to reality. I looked over at Shiloh. He calmed down a bit and was now looking at me through the glass as if to say, What the hell are we still doing here? He was right. We couldn't stay here. Of course we couldn't stay here. I didn't know what this storm was or if it was even a storm to begin with. In the strictest sense of the word, but I had no indication it was letting up anytime soon. And I didn't know what that thing was. Alright boy, I said it under my breath, more to myself than to him. Alright, let's get the hell out of here. It took me mere minutes to throw a bag together. Clothes, electronics, toiletries, other necessities within the grasp of convenience. And to get that and Shiloh situated in the truck, I thrown it all in haphazardly and in my haste I was positive I forgot something. But I didn't care. I just wanted to leave. To get as far away from this place as I could before things got worse. I didn't know what was waiting for us out there, either. I didn't know how far the destruction went, or how wide reaching the storm was, or if this was all indeed some kind of apocalyptic level event. But if that was the case, and if we got caught out in the middle of it, and at least we know for sure before we died. It wasn't exactly a comforting thought, I had to admit, but the possibility of escape was certainly. I locked up the house, not like a particularly mad it, and then, after throwing up the hood of my jacket and sipping it to my chin, I grabbed the handle of the garage door and threw it up, letting the wind and rain and hail blast its way inside and soak everything. So violent was the storm that it looked like we were staring out into a blizzard. The wind whipped and rain was flying in just about every direction. Not just down and in the fray too, the rocks of hail and leaves and sometimes whole branches. Alright boy, I shouted as I climbed into the truck, you ready? He looked at me and he didn't whine or bark or make any sound or movement whatsoever. My thoughts exactly but, I rubbed his head and turned the key. The truck, which luckily had nearly a full tank in its gut, revved into life. Then I eased my foot onto the gas and off we went, high beams on, windshield wipers on full blast. The drive was rough with debris, so the truck bounced and jostled as we made our way towards the wooded path that led out onto the main road. God, let that road be clear. I knew the odds were against us, but I didn't have it in me to think about that right now. I just kept going, 5, 10, 15 miles per hour, through the surf and the storm and hail. The trees offered some manner of shelter, at least, and spectacularly, the road was clear enough to drive through. None of the felled trunks had barricaded the path forward. I didn't want to wait around for that to happen. It looked like it could at any second, so I hit the gas harder and we fell into gear and shook and rolled all the way down to the Hill Farms Boulevard. Can't believe we got this far, huh boy? Shiloh was whimpering in the seat next to me. Hang in there champ, we'll be out of this mess before you know it. I said the words, but I'm not sure if I believed them. We drove north for hours. Occasionally we see a tree in the road, or a pile of debris, or an abandoned car with its blinkers still flushing through the fog. 
and we navigated accordingly. But by and large, the roads were clear, and I wanted to exploit that fact to its end before the whole damn town and all of the nature's wrath came down on top of us at once. I tried the radio on multiple occasions too, but there was nothing to be heard there but static. I gave up after the third attempt. A burst of red lightning streaked across the whole sky at once. Charlotte didn't respond, but when the thunderclap hit, he jumped almost entirely off the seat. I tensed up my grip on the wheel until my knuckles were white. Things seemed to be getting worse. I didn't want to admit it to myself, even in my head, but it was true. Are we going the wrong way? The weapons were overwhelmed with the onslaught of precipitation. So intense was the downpour, in fact, that I was getting dripped on despite having the car sealed up tight. To boot, there was almost the complete lack of visibility. I could see maybe 50 yards ahead when the rain parted in the wind, but not an inch more. At its worst, I could see nothing but mist and cloud. I reduced my cruising speed to 10 miles per hour to accommodate this. The gas tank sat at a quarter. It carried on this way for over an hour before Shiloh sat up straight and started whimpering and pawing at the window. I looked out of the glass on my side. We were downtown, I saw. It's a small, isolated place. So downtown is about three intersections wide in any direction. But in the shroud of fog and rain, it looked expansive and mysterious. Light poles, sends the light, of course, loomed out the clouds and hung gloomily over the road. I could see storefronts too. Windows and doors were boarded up the most, but in a few. Carl's Pharmacy and the subway among them. The doors were thrown in and the interiors gutted. Debris and rubble littered the sidewalk, and as had been the case in my yard, the road became rough and uneven as a result. Looks like hell out there, doesn't it, boy? Charlotte kept pulling at the glass, but then he stopped. All of a sudden, and he perked up his ear. I listened too. What the hell? For the first time in nearly 26 hours, we began to hear silence. The rain slowed from a torrential downpour to a steady rhythm, then to a drizzle, and then it stopped altogether. And the wind, which had brought up in an incessant howling since yesterday morning, abated too. All the way down to a hint of whisper, even the clouds began to part and spread and thin out, and before long the road ahead became clear enough to see without straining and guesswork. Although fog still covered nearly everything to a certain degree, I laughed aloud and aggressively rubbed the back of Shiloh's head between the ears. Shit boy, we made it! Safe at l My heartbeat slammed into a rhythm, and Shiloh yelped and whined and yelped some more. That sound, that horn blast from earlier, had exploded through the air and vibrated the windows. It was orders of magnitude louder than it was when I'd first hear it. And that mean it was close. Too close! Fuck! And by now, slammed on the brakes and was using both hands to cover my ears. It was fruitless endeavor. I could feel my eardrums rattle in my head even after the blast ceased. Charlotte was going berserk next to me. Come on, calm down, boy. I could hardly hear my own voice over the ringing in my ears. You're not helping anything by... I felt that more than I heard it, and I heard it just fine. I slowly crammed my ears over the, to the left. The whole car shook and rattled. I could see pebbles on the ground leaping up in unison at the impact. And there it was. A leg. A leg that more closely resembled a California redwood in complexion and size, although it dwarfed even that. The beast was walking across the road and making a spectacle of it. I could only see the mammoth lower half of its leg as it moved. The rest was still shrouded by mist and fog and cloud, but even that was an awesome and terrible sight to behold. It took a full minute for the Titan to cross the road and carry on its way to the east. Slowly, I eased my foot to the pedal and we began to roll forward again, but I never slowed up the rate of my heartbeat. The horn blast sound drifted away on the wind, and soon the centre of the town was behind us and fading deep away into the mist in the rearview mirror. The road remained rough for another mile or so, but the storm continued to clear up, and visibly improve at a slow but steady rate until the view of destruction was negligible. Hang in there, Shiloh. The poor dog was so exhausted he almost lacked the energy to care. We're almost out of here, boy. We're almost free. But then the last of the clouds parted ways, and we saw it. A scene of awesome and spectacular devastation. The whole of Forson County. What had been a sparsely populated region of wooded wilderness stretching from Wilbur Heights 
on its southern neck to Phillips Creek to the northeast, had nearly ceased to exist. In its place now sat a desolate grey pit of impossible scope, miles across and miles deep, reaching down into the earth like an excavation site or an industrial mine dug up to underneath something utterly mammoth size. There were no living trees or grass or running water or any signs of wildlife here, just endless grey rock and stones spiralling down deep and then back up and then stretching off into the distance until it ran up against another wall of fog and storm clouds 10 or 12 miles down. God almighty boy, I said, and I leaned down to view the scene from his side of the glass as we scrolled by. Doing so, I brought the sky into view. Will you look at that? Above the pit, spilling its ruby scarlet light out over the landscape below it, sat the swelling red center of the storm. The relative calmness of the air beneath it hinted its purpose was not particularly unlike a hurricane's eye. And yet it was so thoroughly covered up with clouds it bolted out of the sky entirely. Red lightning cracked and snapped increasing frequency and intensity the closer up to the center things got. And at the center sat a whirling blood red vortex from which everything appeared to emanate and spread. Beneath it were multitudes of titans too, flying up out of the pit and into the vortex and disappearing forever. Charlotte whimpered and whined. I don't know boy, you may have been down there all along. And that thing, there's their way back home. The scene was finally obscured again by wisps of light fog, and before we knew it, we were back again in the th thick of the storm's portal's presence had kicked up. Our atmosphere's white blood cell reaction to something mammoth and alien in mitts. We drove again for hours, through wind and hail and sheets of rain, and past other titans moving home. But we made it through in good order. The storm finally stopped somewhere north of Tawny River and the town there of the same name, where we filled up our tank and got a room for the night. The storm raged for three more days there, non-stop and at full fury for the duration, and then, in the blink of an eye, it was over. The June storm that devastated a previously unknown town in the center of the state is finally beginning to clear. According to authorities from the weather services, an emergency crews are finally free to move into the already lightly populated region in forced to look for survivors and restore power, but their job won't be easy. Yeah, ain't never seen nothing like this. Look here, you see that? It looks a bit like a giant footprint. Yeah, we're thinking the storm ripped up trees and threw them every which way and then blew dirt back into the holes, leaving nothing but a dip like that behind. We've seen tons of these, usually in lines for miles. Maybe a tornado did it. Running theory, anyway. Bizarre scenes like this are indeed everywhere in the affected areas. No doubt a humbling and mysterious testament to these sheer fury Mother Nature can deliver. Coming up after the break, Will- I switched the radio off. Bunch of idiots, huh boy? Charlie didn't respond. He was asleep. Still, but I confirmed it under my breath. Bunch of idiots. We pulled up to the driveway about an hour later, and then we started the long, brutal process of recovering and rebuilding, which as, as of this writing, is still not complete. I still need to get the roof replaced. But none of that matters in the end. I've got a bed to sleep in, and I've got Shiloh with me, too. I think the two of us will be just fine. The worst part, after all, isn't the devastation. It's what amounts to a cover-up. Now, I'm not sure what this storm was, and I couldn't tell you if this was the first of its kind or just the latest in a long chain of poorly reported incidents of similar quality and magnitude, but I do know enough to dismiss the official explanation. That the Wilbur, Forston Hypercell, as it's now known, was just a freak weather phenomenon that can be easily enough dismissed as a strange little footnote of interest to a few outside the relevant fields of study. Luckily for the powers that be too, the affected area is among the least known, most sparsely populated regions in the United States, and what other witnesses there might have been have likely been displaced or killed. But between myself and Shiloh, there are at least two sets of eyes here who've seen the reality of things, so I'm getting the word out. 